What's up everybody and welcome back. Uh, I thought about it and let's have some fun with this video today. So for those of you who may not be familiar, my name is Matthew Hillier, kind of rhymes there. Uh, I am the social media field marketing specialist here at Cobalt Banker Realty Michigan. And for today's training tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through on how to boost a Facebook business page post. So you may be thinking, what's the difference between a boosted post and an ad? Uh, and really the simple answer to that is that a boosted post is a post that you've already made on your timeline that you want to boost out to reach a wider audience. Whereas an ad, you would have to go into Meta's Ads Manager Business Suite to upload all your graphics, your assets to that platform and customize it through that platform itself. So really in the end, a boosted post is essentially a simplified version of Meta's Business Ads platform. Okay, and with that brief introduction, let's go ahead and begin this training tutorial. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do once you log into your Facebook account is to start interacting as your business page. Um, and to do that, you'll head to the top right under your profile photo. We'll click on that circle icon there. We'll click on see all profiles if you manage multiple accounts. Um, and from this pop-up window, we're gonna select your business page that you wanna start interacting as. So we'll select that. And to confirm that you're interacting as that business page, just make sure that um, your business profile photo is showing up at the top right um, and you'll see it on the right excuse me on the left side as well under the uh, dashboard settings so just confirm that and once you're interacting as your business page we're gonna select your business page under manage pages and profiles to go to your business page timeline and once we're on your business page timeline you're gonna want to select a post and this is a good rule of thumb to keep in mind is when you're looking to boost a post that's already been posted on your timeline, find one that has already performed well. Um, that way you can be confident that that boosted post will also perform well with the audience that you have selected. Um, and one way you can gauge on how your one of your existing posts has performed is to keep track of the analytics. So find one on your page that has a decent performance. And maybe for example, let's select, scroll down here. So maybe we want to boost out our Ignite and Awards recap video. You can see it had a decent amount of engagement with seven likes. Um, and that's what we wanna keep in mind. So find something that has good engagement to boost. And once you find that post, we're gonna click on the blue boost post button. So we'll click on that to bring us to our customization features for that post we wanted to boost. Okay, so this is gonna be like the form that you customize. On the left side are your customization features. On the right side is a preview of what your boosted post will look like. So it's gonna include the caption that you already had on that existing post. And then your customization features are gonna start off with including a button um, that people can click on for like a call to action for that boosted post. You can see it defaulted to call now and that corresponds to the button on the right hand side here. And if you wanna customize that, click on the drop down, and you have various options you can select from. So you can, you can have a book now, learn more, sign up, shop now, get directions, or send a direct message. You know, depending on what your boosted post is, just keep in mind um, the, the kind of button you want to correspond to that. Um, for this example, we're just gonna click on no button, and we want the main focus to be on that boosted post itself. So once you have your call to action button selected, under that is gonna be your special ad category. And this is very key to keep in mind because if you don't select a special ad category for real estate specifically, your ad will not run. And if you continually you know, don't turn on your special ad category, you may start violating the community terms of service in your ads um, platform could be temporarily disabled. So just remember to turn that special ad category on or your ads platform will be you know, inactive or disabled. So just remember 
to turn that on. So we're gonna select that on. We'll select the drop down, and we're gonna select housing. So this is gonna be ads for real estate listings, homeowner insurance, mortgage loans, or other related opportunities. So obviously anything coming from your business page is real estate related. Um, so you're gonna to wanna to always turn on your housing special ad category on. So we're gonna select the housing category. And once you have your special ad category turned on, this is where you're gonna spend um, you know, a good, good time of your focus is on the audience. So one thing to keep note of is that with boosted posts coming from the real estate ad category is that, you know, to follow the fair housing standards, Facebook has limited the, you know, audience features and demographics that you can reach. Um, again, just to stay up to date with the fair housing standards. Um, so once you have your detail, you want to set your details, we'll click on the pencil. So on the right side, we'll click on the pencil. And real estate is limited to um, option targeting options regarding location. And you can select interest-based targeting um, features right below your locations. So when you are thinking about your locations, you know, keep it on a broad scale. You don't want your locations to be too narrow. You don't want it to be too broad. So think about Southeast Michigan, or if you want to reach, you know, you know, the whole state of Michigan, you could do that too. Um, but I recommend, you know, keeping it hyper local because the more you farm your boosted posts or your ads, the more, um, you know, name recognition and the more that builds up over time. And, um, you know, to keep, keep your ads boosted to a, you know, a centralized location. Don't mix it up every time, you know, target a similar area, you know, back to back, you know, throughout the same year, if you're, if you have a uh, budget allocated for that. So your locations, just start typing that in. So right now we'll do like Rochester Hills. We'll do that for location. Um, we'll spread it out through like Gross Point. And let's have a Northville one in there. So we can type in the cities or we can enter in the zip codes. And as you're selecting those cities, you can see it creates a 15 mile radius for each one of those. And those are all customizable. Um, you know, if you want to select Rochester location and select the radius uh, miles you can drag and drop that to the right going up to 50 miles um, on there um, and same with the rest you know click on gross point you can change that to that next radius say like 45 miles um, and have a variation between you know the the cities that you have targeted in there so have a have a wide spread out location, nothing too narrow, nothing too broad. Okay, once you have your locations, we're gonna scroll down to your detail targeting. And this really comes in handy if you have a specific post um, that you wanna target you know, on interest-based options. So um, I generally run my boosted posts with just location targeting. I completely skip over detail targeting unless it's something I have boosted to a very specific audience. So depending on the post that you're, you're boosting, just keep that in mind. If you want it, you know, a detail targeting on interest, you can include that or if you just don't want to have anything, that's totally fine as well. Um, if you want to have some interest targeting in there, click on browse. And from the list that pops up, you can start selecting any of those. And I wouldn't select anything more than, you know, 15, you know, slim that down to about, you know, five um, to eight in there is a, is a pretty good sweet spot. Um, so once you have those set, it comes up with some suggested ones as well, right below that. So you have like interior design, starter home, Zillow, job hunting, apartment lists, you know, starter home is, is probably one that's gonna be popular. So let's select starter home and we'll have that in your interest based targeting. And once you have all that set, we'll head down to the 
audience definition. So you can see, as I was talking about, you know, if you have your specific range and you have your broad range and you want your range to fall right in the middle, you don't want anything too far left. You don't want anything too far right um, because that will kind of tweak your, your analytics. You want something that's right in the middle in that green option there. So once your audience definition is set to the middle, very nice. You will click on the save audience button right at the bottom right. So we'll save that in there. And the following step under audience is gonna be your duration and your total budget. So you can select the amount of days that you want it to run for, or you can select the end date from the calendar. So I, I would recommend you know, running your boosted post for the full month, depending on your budget you wanna allocate. Um, so we're gonna run this for you know 38 days until June 30th. And the next one will be your budget. So it defaulted to 420. If you wanted to keep that 420 budget, totally cool. If you want to adjust that to maybe something a little bit less, maybe like you only want to spend you know fifty dollars for that month. Um, just keep in mind you do want to have your credit cards in there and you're staying up to date with your credit reports and your credit spending. So you'll get emails for recent and just keep on top of that because you don't want to be, have, you don't want to have a delinquency um, invoice that you're not paying because that will affect your credit score and, and it could affect your ads account on there to be disabled. So stay on top of your budget, you know, have a reasonable amount in there and stay on top of your invoices coming via email so you can pay those as they come through. Okay, so once you have that set and your budget set, your Facebook is going to um, submit that ad to their review center. And that usually, you know, takes up to, you know, the same day, usually, if not, you know, one to two business days, that will be submitted and reviewed and accepted. And the way that Facebook um, charges you is based on your um, your reach and your engagement. So the more people you reach, the more you'll spend and you won't always spend the total budget. So keep that in mind, Facebook charged you based on impression. And below that, we'll have your placements. If your Facebook business page is connected to your Instagram, it will be posted to both platforms. So that is a big benefit um, from boosting a post standpoint is that it will be posted to both platforms on Facebook and your Instagram. So have that selected from the drop down. Just make sure that it's selected on. If you want to turn something off, just select the blue check mark and turn that off. So right now I just have Facebook and Instagram. And once you have your placements set, just review everything top to bottom. Again, I'll quickly do this in review. You have your call to action button. You have your special ad category, which is essential to have on or your ad will not run. So make sure your special ad category is turned on or your ads account could be disabled if you're, um, that's a common theme that you're not turning that on. So keep that in mind, special ad category on. Audience, based on location and interest, we'll save that and then your duration and your total budget. And then lastly, your placements on Facebook and Instagram are turned on. Once it looks all good to go, you'll hit boost posts and that will submit it to the review team and it will be accepted uh, within a couple business days. Okay, so the last thing I wanna show you is where you can view your analytics from your boosted posts. So before we wrap up, I'm gonna quickly show you, this, show you the analytics features as well that you can um, view as your boost post is being boosted. So once you're on your Facebook business page timeline, on the left side panel here, you'll see Ad Center. Look on Ad Center. And this is where you're gonna see all your previous and all your um, active boosted posts and ads you can see on here. So all of ours have completed, but you'll see a, a green active button here, and a green active button there if it's um, running currently. Um, and to view those stats, you click on uh, view results, and that will show you your viewed results 
for post engagements, reach, you know, your cost per engagement. So the one analogy I like to give real estate agents when we're meeting is that you want to approach a boosted post as you would as somebody driving on the highway past the billboard. Um, the billboard will be your boosted post on somebody's newsfeed. So as they're scrolling on their newsfeed, you want to capture their attention in three seconds or less. Um, the same amount of attention that a gyro would have, you know, driving past a billboard on the highway. So having eye-catching graphics, a call to action, um, a personal branding element, um, your contact information, a tagline, a motto, you want to have that consistent across all of your boosted posts or the content that you're putting out as an ad. So think of that analogy, your boosted post is like a billboard on the highway, um, except the boosted post on your newsfeed, which would be the highway, and the cars would be the people scrolling on that newsfeed. So capture their attention, have a call to action, and be consistent. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you boost a post on your Facebook business page. Stay tuned for next month's webinar as I'll be going over the Bay Social Media Center dashboard. You won't want to miss it.